Good afternoon everybody. What I'm going to do today is this card. This is where we're headed and what I'm hoping to do really is to show you a set of the stencils from start to finish so that A you can see how quick they are, B you can see how easy they are and hopefully if you're sort of undecided as to whether you need them, whether you want them, whether you like them, whether you think they're any good, um, then hopefully this will make your mind up for you. So today's card, this is where we're headed, is based on the current challenge, which is obviously, as you know, the sketch challenge. So I thought I would make my card based on this, just to show you a different um, version, perhaps just boost your um, mojo a little bit, just so that you can um, have a go at the challenge yourself. So that's where we're headed. I'm mainly going to be using this set of stencils. Um, it's the, the Camellia Cluster. This, I think, has to be my favourite. Now, obviously, I'm using Lisa's fabulous platform, the Ultimate Multi-Tool Stamping Platform. So, yes, this is Lisa's fabulous stamping platform, which has obviously got multiple uses. Um, and this is the fabulous little bag it comes in. I love this. And I think the main reason I love it is this fabulous little pocket on the front. I've put my washi tape on my magnets just to um, make it a little bit easier to pick them up. And as Lisa showed you the other day on the live, um, there are two pieces in here. There's a piece of black foam, which you can use when you're stamping, or you can use the silicon mat. Either way. If you want to use the um, guides on here for lining up, that's great. Um, this for me is what I would use if I was stamping because it's it's not too thick, but just gives the card a little bit of cushioning for when you're stamping onto it. And I just think that's really, really lovely. Right. So I'm using the silicon mat and I'm using it upside down because I don't need the guidelines. Um, I'm not worried about those. So I just put my black piece of foam to one side and I'm sticking with this. Okay, so first off I need to place my piece of card in my platform and then I'm going to be using my stencils. Now as I said I'm using the Camellia Cluster and all I'm going to do basically is just go in, do the stenciling just to show you how easy it is, how quick it is. And then right at the end, we'll put the card together and layer it all up. OK, so starting with the leaves, don't forget these are all numbered. There's six in this set. They're all numbered. And so long as you've got your number face up on the left hand side, all the others will follow and they will sit in the right place. Obviously, if you want your flowers to sit the other side, the other way, and you're only using the stencil, so you're not die cutting, you could flip the stencil over and do it so that they're facing the other way. But I'm sticking with the way they were designed for now. So to start with, I'm using shabby shutters, and all I'm doing is rubbing my ink through the stencil, circular motions, and to me, that gives you the best coverage I'm not using the little stencil brushes on this occasion only because um, for, for sort of quickness really and I just think these wonder brushes do give a beautiful coverage anyway. Okay, the beauty of this of course is that I can take my stencil off, have a look at what I've got underneath and decide whether I'm happy with it. If I decide I'm not happy with it, I can put my stencil back and go over it again where I'm not happy. So just a little bit there that I'd nest and a little bit on the edge of the leaves there that I'd nest. OK, so that's my first layer done. So I'm going in with the flowers now. This is number two. And we're going in with a very pale pink on all three, all of the flowers. So I've got a, a small one here, some tiny ones here and then the three main ones. And I'm going in with, as I say, spun sugar. And I'm doing the same colour all over because as a base it can be it can just be all the same colour because my colour changes 
will come when I use the following stencils on it. So it takes a little while, but it a little while, but no time at all, really, is I suppose what I'm trying to say. Um, it depends a lot on the colours that you're using as to how quickly the colour spreads through your card. I'm using Lisa's Super Soft 250 GSM stamping card because I just think it takes the colour really, really beautifully. Now, this is uh, quite quick, quite easy. This is quite pale, so I am just going to keep going a little bit, just so that I've got a bit of a deeper colour. Pale, but a little bit more, a little bit more obvious. I'm just going back over those little flowers there. Okay, so if I lift that off, you can see that we've got the base of all our flowers now. So that was number two. So on to number three. I mean, how easy is this? How quick is it? It's brilliant. So number three is this flower here. Now I'm going to use um, Kitsch Flamingo on this one. Not for any other reason other than they're three nice pinks that I think go together well. Now obviously... I'm going to lose a lot of this base colour, but that's fine because it all helps to build up your colours. So I'm going with my brush again. I'm doing circular movements because I think it gives a better coverage. If you're using stencil brushes, um, you could again use circular movements or you could dab them in. I am going to do a little bit of dabbing in a little while, which I'll show you. And you can see the difference if I've got like a, a very narrow place to add my ink then I would go in probably with a, a dab as opposed to a, a circular brush stroke okay so there's my base of my flower how easy is this how could you not want something like this in your life I just think it's amazing so I've used Kitsch Flamingo on those and I think I'm going to use my picked raspberry on this one and this one. Yeah. So these are quite vibrant. But I am going to add a little bit of accent colour to these in a little while. So you'll be able to see the difference. So on this one, I'm going to go back to my Kitsch Flamingo. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the pink off my brush. Because obviously picked raspberry is a little bit darker than Kitsch Flamingo. But I go in here again with my brush. Okay, so these two are quite a similar colour. I don't mind that because I'm actually going to change those up a little bit in a minute. Um, and then lastly, I'm going in with a darker shade of green to add all the detail on my leaves. So these are all the veins on my leaves. And I'm just going to go in and add that detail for you. Already, I'm sort of nearing completion on my stenciling. Um, obviously the, the last little bits are going to take a bit of time um, because when we come to put it together we've got some die cutting to do and some embossing to do. Obviously you don't have to emboss it. Um, I've done cards for the samples which weren't embossed. Okay, now that looks nice. I'm pleased with that. How quick and how easy was that? Um, now what I am going to do is I'm going to go back with my flowers and I'm going to add a little bit of detail inside these flowers. So we're going to start with this one down here. And what I'm going to use is a grey. Now you might think, oh, she's lost her marbles here. Why on earth is she using grey? I'm using grey because I don't want to use another shade of pink um, because the the darker shade of pink that I would be using is something like uh, probably seedless preserves and to me that's too dark 
So what I want to do is just using this grey is just come off the stencil lines a little bit ever so lightly hardly any pressure at all here and you'll notice that I'm actually brushing off some of the ink that, I'm, that I've got on my little stencil brush actually onto the stencil and um, just to basically not overload the the area that I'm working in okay I do go a little bit quiet when I'm doing stuff like this it's it's a bit it's quite mindful and it's it's difficult to talk and and ink at the same time but just by adding that little bit of shadow it's completely changed that flower don't you think now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the same on this top one up here but I am going to go from the middle and I'm going to go a little bit darker because I want that centre of that flower to look as though it's standing proud of the petals. So it's just it's just little accents that just change up the flower completely. All right. So then we're going to go back to this. Now, remember, we used Kitsch Flamingo on here. So because um picked raspberry is quite a lot darker than Kitsch Flamingo. On this one and this one we're going to add um, picked raspberry into the um, stencil lines so that that gives it its its sort of accents if you like. So I'm going to come off the middle there and again I'm sorry if I go a bit quiet but and then from the middle here I'm just going to come out off my stencil lines just to give it a little bit of it just gives the flowers a little bit of depth I might have gone a little bit heavy there but I think it'll all be relative when I've taken the flowers off because I've missed a bit up there It always looks worse on the stencil than it does when you actually take it off. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So that's that one. And then this is the other flower and I'm going to do exactly the same on there. Okay. So we're just adding again a little bit of shadow off the stencil lines, spreading it out. onto the rest of the flower just to give that flower a little bit of lift and a little bit of interest when you actually put it onto your card you might lose a little bit of this when you emboss it but I don't think it will matter to be honest right so I'll just take that off there now don't you think just those tiny few details just make that a little bit more interesting if i lift it up a bit so that you can see it a little bit better and just wait for my video to catch up okay you see how those little bits of shadow just lift the flowers a little bit and um, i just think it makes just a, a subtle enough difference so i'm just going to put that back because what i forgot to add I'm going to have to line this up carefully now, is my centres of my flowers and that's okay and for this I'm going to use a yellow. Now just look how much ink these brushes actually pick up. I just think they're so beautiful, they're so soft as well. Now see this is where I think dabbing the ink is better because it will because there's such tiny holes to get through on these flower centers you just want to give it enough um, enough pressure to actually get the ink through the tiny little holes so i think that's where the the dabbing action would come in better than um circular motions personally for me anyway so there you go 
now that I've added the centre of the flowers I just think that's made all the difference okay so that's my stenciling all done how quick was that because it comes with an embossing folder and a die I am going to um, die cut it and emboss it for you while we're live just again so that you can see how easy really it is to um, line it all up and die cut it so die cut in first because obviously if you emboss first and then die cut you'll squash your embossing and we don't want that not when we've just spent that time um, doing all our stenciling and our inking okay so that's lined up nicely I mean that looks beautiful as it is so you wouldn't necessarily need to emboss it if you didn't want to I want to but but you could use that on its own you could actually do it direct onto a square piece of card if you wanted rather than die cutting it out and just put it straight down onto your card um, so you, you know you don't there are there are different methods there are different ways of using it um, e all equally as, as fabulous now all you're going to do now is line this up in your folder and when you close it you can see that that is lined up really well I don't know whether you can actually see how easily it lines up because it, the embossing is so deep in these folders it just sits in the right place so I'm just going to run that through and then reach out the embossed piece how beautiful does that look it's gorgeous isn't it I just I just think it's fabulous okay so now we've got our flowers I'll just move my inks out of the way and we'll go to actually putting the card together now obviously I've done a little bit ahead of time so obviously I've already put my my um, double-sided pads on the back of this um, I know they look a lot but what I don't want is for the card to sort of sag in the middle so we'll just pop that down now you can see I've already added my string as per the sketch diagram because there is like a little piece of string or twine or whatever you want to put on there so I've already added that and secured it at the back and I'm just going to add this to my base card now my base card was an 8 by 8 card which I've just cut down um, so I think it's actually 20 centimeters by 15 I think um, and then all my mat and layers are sort of half an inch smaller than that all the way down so that's my first layer and when I did these leaves I actually used this set of stencils the um, essential foliage I love these these are fabulous they look amazing when you've when you've done them all and um, but what I've used here is just one one part of number one stencil and I've, and I've just done it as a background and I've just inked through it and again I've used the same ink spun sugar so that it all ties in together then the second piece of card here goes down the bottom here and with this I've embossed a piece of white card using the pretty leaves embossing folder and then I'm going to position that there now I was going to layer this up and put double-sided pads on but I've decided that I'm going to put it flat because I'm actually going to layer up my floral piece instead okay so I'll pop that down there it's a little bit of overspill there but never mind okay so that's you can see now where my pieces are coming from on the sketch yeah. right so I've added that I'll just put my lid on my glue and then I'm going to add my floral display here now obviously you can see it's a bit bigger than my card isn't it and I don't want to cut too much off it I want to use the the main part of this die so what I'm going to do is put my double sided pads on the back here and then I'm just going to trim these little bits off that overhang the card so I'm going to pop that down there like that 
and then I'm just going to trim off those edges. Now, I know it seems like sacrilege after I've sat and stenciled all that, but I think when you see the finished card, I don't think it detracts from it at all. I've used Lisa's um, foiled and plain sentiments. Now, I know there are lots of sentiments like this out there on the market and you get the obligatory white on black and black on white. But our Lisa, because she's our Lisa, has to go one step better. And she's done gold on white and silver on white. This is the gold that you can see here. If I just tilt it a little bit, the light's catching it. So it does look silver, but trust me, it's gold. Um, and I just think they add such a beautiful finishing touch. To... There are two sets of these sentiments. One is um, celebrations based and sort of goes along um, congratulations, all the family names, um, mummy, daddy, auntie, birthday, all those sorts of things that you use every day. And then the other set is sort of more inspirational sayings, sort of sending you happy smiles. Um, you're so amazing. Long distance hugs. This one that I used yesterday was today is full of possibilities. And I can't remember which one I was going to be. Uh, everything will be OK, I think, was going to be today's, whenever I find it. So um, I will add that and I will pop it into the group later and um, put them both together. But I think you'll agree that they are well worth a little bit of investment because they will save you oodles of time. They're just so innovative. I just think what an awesome idea and opens up crafting to so many different people who probably wouldn't have had the confidence to do something like this. So take care, everybody. Have a nice week. See you soon. Bye.